Ishinomaki Red Cross Hospital in Japan took the full brunt of a magnitude 9 earthquake. But the hospital survived without so much as a broken window. That's because the hospital was built on a hill beyond the tsunami zone. And during the quake, the entire building floated on a cushion of springs. Jay toured the hospital with Dr. Chris Goldfinger and Allison Perch. This was seismic engineering unlike anything they'd seen in Oregon. So can you explain the system to me? Inside, there is a rubber isolator, which consists of 26 layers of rubber and iron seed. It is structured to prevent the hospital from getting damaged in the earthquake by suppressing the vertical shaking and shaking sideways. Base isolation is now in wide use across Japan, but in the U.S., it's California that's taking the lead. Engineers at UC San Diego built this mock hospital to California's highest seismic standards. But then they tested it with and without base isolation. With base isolation, the hospital rolled through even the most violent motions. Without base isolation, the building stands, but the damage is severe. Base isolation is expensive, and in Oregon, it's not required in hospitals, even in earthquake zones. Jay insists it's a model for the future. The payoff for that big hospital in, in Shinomaki is it, it worked. It continued to deliver in the worst case scenario because they built it above and beyond the minimum codes. But in Gold Beach, there's still the fight about where the new hospital will go. Local officials use 20-year-old tsunami maps to conclude the hospital is beyond danger. The state says new maps, based on the latest science, reveal a much greater threat. And there's another problem. It's going! Get everybody out of the way! It's going! The whole thing going! Landslides. Everything in red here is land the state says could slide during a Cascadia quake. There's a reason why Gold Beach isn't up on the hills, because those hills are geologically unstable. With money, land and buildings can be engineered to withstand even big quakes. But in Oregon, no one is offering money. Unfunded mandates are, in my opinion, ridiculous. It's like, what's the point of, of coming up with a plan if you don't have a way to implement the plan? If the state wants to talk about resiliency, then they need to pony up the cash. <laughs>